araw ay may dalang mga posibilidad. Nang tagumpay o kabiguan, nang ligaya o lungkot. Kaya marapat lamang natanggapin si Yeso Kristo bilang tagapagligtas at Panginoon. At matapos yon ay panariwain ang katapatan at paglapit sa Kanya bawat araw o day by day. Ang day by day ay naglalayong umalalay sa pang-araw-araw na pamumuhay kristyano. Narito po si Pastor Ed Lapis sa mensaheng pinamagatang Bridge That Generation Gap One of the uh, greatest challenges of societies today, especially societies in developing nations like ours, is the generation gap, so to speak, if there really is such a thing. What is generation gap? It's a modern-day phenomenon. It's a modern-day sociological and anthropological problem. Discrepancies between old and young people have escalated in modern times. Now, more than ever, there seems to be a great difference among old people and young people. How can that generation gap be bridged? So to, at this point, we're going to discuss bridging that generation gap. Ama namin Diyos, sumuhingi po kami ng simpleng mensahe na magkakaroon ng napakagandang bunga sa bawat pamilya, sa bawat individual. We pray, Father, that you're going to descend upon this place. Look upon your people with favor and show us your face. Allow us to hear your voice. Through the power of the blood of Jesus, we reject, rebuke, and drive away any presence of evil, any forms of lies, half-truths, and deceptions. And we welcome your truth, Holy Spirit. Release us from darkness. Give us eyes that see, so we can see the wonderful truth of God. Father, speak to us. Be our speaker today. Let your words become food for our spirits. And let your words become light to guide us. Speak with power and majesty. Rule over your people. Do your will. We seek you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let's open our Bibles to 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And in verse 5a, you will see there an admonition for young people. At naging representative yung men. Young men ang sinabi dito. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. So that was a submission to young men. And may I add, young women. Be submissive to those who are older. And in 1 Peter 5, 2, to the elders, the admonition of Peter was, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. 1 Peter 5, 2, be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care. Let's take note that whenever we use the word elders, at least in this particular study, we're going to discuss it both in the light of church, eldership, and family leadership. In other words, elder as elder of the church, and elder also as an older person in the family setting. And whenever we use the word young man or young men, we also mean young women there, to be discussed in the context of both church hierarchy and family relations. Ano ba ang halaga ng mga matatanda? May halaga nga ba ang matatanda? At bakit yung matatanda sa mas mga makalumang mga lipunan ay mas pinahahalagahan kaysa mga makabago? Halimbawa, sa Pilipinas, mas bida ang mga matatanda kaysa sa Amerika. Mga mas makabago. Whenever we say makabago o makaluma, walang derogatory uh, meaning yon Hindi ibig sabihin, ini-endorse yung makabago o mas mabuti yon O hindi ibig sabihin, yung makaluma ay parang kulelat o huli-huli. Hindi ganon. Ibig lang sabihin, makaluma, makabago. Bakit mas pinahahalagahan sa ancient societies, even, tri- even in tribal cultures, yung matatanda? At bakit pagka ang isang bayan ay umuunlad, economically and materially, nawawala ng ganong klaseng pitagan pagpapahalaga sa matatanda. Well, anthropology will probably give us explanations because of culture. The culture of literacy and non-literacy. The more traditional a culture is, it is non-literate. Hindi natin sinasabing illiterate. Non-literate, meaning maaaring hindi sila marunong magsulat at magbasa, or marunong sila magsulat at magbasa, pero hindi gaanong 
pinahahalagahan o ginagamit ang pagsusulat at pagbabasa. Because in non-literate societies, mas mahalaga yung orality. Meaning communication, the passing on of information, and the preservation of knowledge, especially tribal, national, group knowledge, is kept through the spoken word, not through the printed word. What do I mean? Pagka tayo ay merong nagpunta sa mga tribo, alam natin ang mga matatanda doon, kakantahin nila halimbawa ang mga epics, mga chants ng kanilang lahi, alam nila yung history nila going back to several hundreds or thousand years. Even among the Ifugaos, an average Ifugao knows in his mind the names of 17 generations of his family going back in time. Hindi yung nakasulat na sa utak yun. Orality. Ang mga kasabihan, yung mga tinatawag natin ng mga proverbs, mga two-liners o one-liner sentences na actually takes many years, sometimes hundreds or thousands of years before you can make such a statement because these are very wise observance of reality that is filtered by remembering, processed by time. Bago ka makagawa, halimbawa, ng isang kasabihan na ang di lumilingon sa pinanggalingan ay di makararating sa paroroonan, kailangan ng napakaraming lifetimes of observation bago mo masabi yung ganong generalization. Pagka ang naglalakad ng matulin, kung matinik ay malalim, Grabing observation ang kailangan mo, pagtanda ng mga pangyayari at pagkuha ng mga generalizations out of the particular before you can say such a sentence. Kaya yan ay ipunan ng mga karunungan na inipon sa maraming maraming taon, kadalasan sa maraming maraming mga saling lahi o mga henerasyon. In non-literate cultures, ang karunungan na yan ay nakatago sa mga kaisipan ng matatanda. In other words, Mahalagang mahalaga ang matatanda dahil sila ang nakakaalam ng istorya ng lahi. Sila ang nakakaalam ng mga nangyari sa kasaysayan. Sila ang nakakaalam ng mga formula maging ng agriculture kung paano magkakaingin sa ang panahon dapat tagain ang kawayan para masabing taga sa panahon. Sila ang repository of all knowledge. That's why in ancient, in tribal, in non-literate and conservative societies, old people are very, very important. Sa pagbibigay, halimbawa, ng mga judgments, may mga conflict, mga nagkakagalit, sino ang mag-i-interpret ng lahat ng collective knowledge and values and aspirations of the tribe para mabigyan ng verdict kung sino ang tama at mali, paano papatawa ng parusa ang isang pagkakamali, wala yan sa libro, yan ay nasa isip ng matatanda. Kung gayon, napakahalaga nila. Elders learn and teach through orality. And orality has certain qualities. And one of that is repetitiveness or repetitiousness. Halimbawa, ako'y nagtuturo. Wala akong notes dahil non-literate ang aking uh, uh, sitwasyon. Magiging akong paulit-ulit para huwag kong malimutan ang lahat ng aking dapat sabihin. Paulit-ulit yon, Para makatiyak ako na hindi ko ma-miss ang anuman, hindi ko makakaligtaan ang anumang dapat kong sabihin. Paulit-ulit ako dahil wala akong notes eh. At kung kayo naman nasa non-literate society because you don't take notes, wala kayong pwedeng balikan kung ano mga nasabi na kailangan ulit-ulitin din sa inyo para ma-review yun. Dahil you don't know where you are. To keep track of any, any discussion, it has to be repeated. Kaya matiting maatatandaan nga nyo, ang mga matatanda, makukulit. Paulit-ulit. At ang mga young people, ayaw nila yon, Kasi ang mga young people in modernizing countries, wala na sila sa orality. Hindi na sila non-literate orientation, but already literate orientation. And in literate orientation, because I write, I write it once, don't repeat it, because if I need it, I go back to page 2 and I see it. Isa yan sa mga conflict ng old and young generation, yung repetitiousness. But old people will tend to repeat, although they are already in a literate culture right now, because they are product and remnants of a non-literate orientation. And it is important for young people, especially those who are young here, to understand kung ba't gano'n ang mga matatanda pa ulit-ulit. Hindi dahil ang kulit nila, hindi dahil wala silang trust sa bata, hindi dahil uh, wala silang ibang magawa, kundi gano'n ang orientation nila eh. Non-literate. Hindi illiterate ha. Non-literate. And non-literate people and non-literate or, um, orientation 
tends to be conservative. Bakit conservative? Meaning, kung ano yung nando na, yun na yun. Huwag na yung papalitan, huwag na yung iibahin. Kaya sasabihin ng mga conservative na matatanda, eh ganyan na yung laging ginawa, hindi na pwedeng palitan yan. Dito na tayo namulat, dito na tayo mamamatay. Ito na ang nating nakasanayan, hindi na natin iibahin. Because in non-literate orientation, in the absence of notes and absence of text, I cannot risk flirting with new ideas because I might forget the old ideas that are in my mind that took many, many years to get there. Kaya hindi ako mag entertain ng mga bagong ideya, bagong disenyo ng damit, bagong style ng buhok, bagong pamamaraan ng recipe, bagong ganito, bagong ganon. Because in the absence of a text of what I already know, I run the risk of forgetting all of it when I entertain something new. Kaya ang mga matatanda, conservative. Ayaw nilang baguhin ang kanilang mga pamamaraan, hindi dahil matigas ang kanilang ulo, hindi dahil sila'y mangmang, kundi dahil yon ang kanilang orientation. Di ba kayo man? I'll give you a very, very uh, typical example. Halimbawa, may nagdikta sa inyo ng telephone number. Ba ang telephone number nila? 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 7. Okay, 1, 2, 3, 3, 4, 5, 7. Pag may kumakausap sa'yo, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7. Hindi ba hindi ka mag-entertain ng bagong idea dahil baka mawala yung nasa laman ng utak mo eh. Hindi ka titingin sa TV, hindi ka titingin kung saan-saan. Wala kang papakinggan na ibang sinasabi. Dahil baka yun ang pumasok sa utak mo, matanggal tuloy yung number na nandito. Pag naisulat mo na yon, ano nga yung sinasabi mo kanina? Pwede na kitang entertainin dahil nakasulat na eh, pwede kong balikan. Kaya ang mga tao na nasa oral tradition, hindi sila nag entertain ng maraming bago. Because they have to preserve and conserve what is. So they will not entertain what may become. Ngayon, ang pinagkaiba? Ang mga young people, lalo sa bansa natin, nasa ano na sila? Literate orientation. Nagsusulat, nagbabasa. Because of that, they are no longer conservative, but creative. Creative in the sense that now they are willing to make new things, to try new things, new formula, new recipe, new hairstyle, new like this, new like that. Because anytime they have a picture of themselves and dating hairstyle, pwede malikan. Na isulat na nila yung recipe, kaya pwede nilang balikan yon just in case na hindi nila nagustuhan yung experiment nila. Pwede silang bumalik sa mga dati ng ginagawa kung hindi nag-click itong mga bago dahil nakasulat. In other words, pwede silang mag-risk, then they can be less conservative and more creative. Kaya isa yan sa mga gap ng mga matatanda at mga bata. Conservative, creative. Pare-pareho sila na bunga ng kanilang mga sistema. Why? Because with the advent of literateness, hindi literacy ha, kasi literacy to be able to read or write, even ancient Tagalogs read and wrote. Even the Mangyans have their own um ways to write, to read and write. So, hindi illiterate ang mga tao natin. Except, hindi tayo mahilig dyan. Gusto natin oral. Kaya mga Pilipino, hindi mahilig magbase. Mahilig makinig ng radyo. Tingnan nyo ang ministry natin. Whenever we write books and booklets, nobody reads. But everybody buys our tapes. Kasi ang totoo niyan, ang Pilipinas, nasa crossroads pa ng orality. Gusto pa rin natin yung oral talaga kesa yung textual. Nasa non-literate pa tayo, hindi pa tayo nasa literate. Kaya hindi tayo mahilig talaga magbasa. At kung nagbabasa, nakapila doon sa mga iskinita sa uh, University Belt Comics. Yung mga drawing, yung hindi talaga puro teksto. Hindi pa tayo mahilig talaga dyan. Kaya mga tao will rather pagkwentuhan yung Bible, i-discuss kaysa mag-devotion mag-isa. Kasi hindi tayo mahilig magbasa pa. Hindi pa tayo ganun ka-literate in our orientation. But, Generally speaking, the younger generation is more literate in orientation than the older. Now, bakit nawawala ng halaga ang matatanda? Kasi sa literate culture, ang lahat ng kaalaman wala na sa utak ng tao. Nasaan? Nasa printed word. Nasa ba? Libro. Nasa disket. Di ba? Yun na ngayon ang authority, yung disket. Yung kaprasong disket na ito, Diba? Mas marami tong alam kesa sa lola ko. And you can imagine kung bakit nawawala ng halaga ang matatanda sa literate, modern, creative societies. Because they are no longer the authorities of knowledge. They are no longer the repository of 
information. Sa katunayan nga, baka yung grade 5 student na marunong mag-operate ng computer, mas maraming alam kesa sa lola niya na 75 taon lang nabubuhay at nag-o-observe ng buhay. Nag-e-erode tuloy yung authority ng matatanda. Kasi kung hindi ka naman mas maraming alam, bakit ka nagka-authority? Kaya ngayon, nagkakaroon ng generation gap, nagkakaroon ng conflict. At yung matatanda na repetitious pa rin, lalo namang naiinis yung mga bata, dahil you don't need to repeat anything by, you know, pushing a button, he can get back all the information he wants, especially in a computer. So, hindi niya kailangan ng repetition. And this contributes to the generation gap. Elders are conservative, younger ones are creative. Ang point, mga elders, Mga ancients, wala naman yata dito. Kandidato pa lang. How will you survive? How will you blend with your younger children and grandchildren and continue to be important in a modernizing, literacy-seeking time? Paano? Ano yung challenge? First of all, People who are old should continue to acquire and keep knowledge. This time probably through literature or text or print. Kailangan abreast. Hindi na katulad ng araw na experience is your credential. Kasi ngayon, hindi ko na kailangan ma-experience ng maraming bagay para malaman. Pipindutin ko yung buton, lalabas yung informasyon. Kaya if it's accessible to younger ones, the older ones, who like to be attuned to the times, should keep up with technology. To continue to be interesting and to continue to be relevant. Why? Because conservation of knowledge is no longer done personally, but through technology. So old people can really become irrelevant. Pagkakailangan kung malaman how to dry, halimbawa, kamyas, so that I can preserve it for next season, hindi ko na kailangan pumunta sa matanda. Pupunta ako sa recipe book. Pagka gusto kong malaman kung paano magpalit ng lampin o magalaga ng baby, hindi ko na kailangan ng advice ng matanda. Ang dami-daming manual. Kung gusto kong malaman paano bubungkali ng lupa, anong itatanim sa mga seasons, nasa mga pamphlet na yan. Samantalang nung araw, oh, kailan tayo puputol ng kawayan? Ay, huwag kayong puputol ng kawayan ngayon. Dahil sa sabihin ng matanda, wala sa panahon. Dahil sa haba ng buhay nila, naobserbahan nila na pag pumutol ka ng kawayan, sa ganitong mga buwan, binubok-bok. Pero pag nagputol ka ng kawayan, sa ganong mga buwan, wala, hindi yun bubok-bokin. Kaya merong such a thing as taga sa panahon. Pero hindi ko na kailangan puntahan ng lola ko para malaman yan. Lahat ng manual tungkol sa kawayan nandun na yun. Paano ngayon ako magiging relevant o kayong tumatanda, di nawawalan ako ng halaga. Ganun ang nangyari sa mga matatanda sa Amerika, eh, sa Europa. Kasi hindi na sila naging authorities on anything. So, how can we bridge the generation gap? How can older people continue to be important? Sabi sa 1 Peter 5, 1 to 4, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder, a witness of Christ's sufferings, and one who also will share in the glory to be revealed. Be shepherds of God's flock that is under your care, serving as overseers, not because you must, but because you are willing, as God wants you to be, not greedy for money, but eager to serve, not lording it over those entrusted to you, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the crown of glory that will never fade away. So, old people, or those who will grow old soon, don't permit yourself to become irrelevant. How? According to Peter, you may continue to be very relevant and important by being a shepherd. No longer as know-it-all, ancient, knowledgeable, old person, but as a shepherd. And what is a shepherd known for but love? Sabi nga ni Lord, a good shepherd will lay down his life for sheep. So love. Parents, when you realize 
that you can no longer fully monopolize the ministry of teaching because probably the children know more. When you can no longer monopolize the area of wisdom because they probably are wiser due to their access to information. When you can no longer monopolize yung leadership because I am more experienced. You can continue to be very important to your children by becoming an authority in love. Because he who loves and he who is loved is never irrelevant. Ang utos kasi sa mga young people, submit to the older ones. Tatlo lang naman ang paraan kaya nagsasubmit ang isang tao eh. Number one, takot. Pero pag siya lumakas na o humina na yung kinakatakutan, nawawala na yon. Kaya yung mga bata, natatakot mo ng ruler, ng palo, pero pag malaki na, baliwala na yon. So hindi pwedeng yun ang premise ng submission, yung takot. Kasi nawawala yon. Sasabihin ng bata, pag laki ko, lagot ka sa aking matanda ka. Di ba? O, papano yon? Di nabaligtad. Pangalawa na reason for submission to anybody, paghanga. Hanga kay ang galing-galing niya, ang talitalino niya, ang dami-dami niyang alam. E paano na kung mas marami ng alam ang younger generation, din o wala na rin yung rason na mag-submit dahil sa paghanga. Pangatlo, nagsasubmit tayo sa tao, nagpapasakop tayo dahil mahal natin. Hindi ba? Sino bang bumibihag sa inyo kundi ang mga mahal nyo? Sino ba ang nakapangyayari sa ating buhay at pinakikinggan natin at ating talagang sinusunod kundi yung mga dahil mahal natin? So parents, and parents to be, if you want to continue with the system that your children submit to you, find another reason why they should be submissive. Not fear. Not fear of going hungry because you are the provider. Because later on, nare-reversion. Di po ba? Kumisan, not always admiration. Yung intellectual admiration na hangang-hanga sila dahil ang galing-galing nyo dahil hindi na nga laging ganun ngayon. Pero number three, let your children be submissive to you. Because they love you. And they love you because you love them first. Because you love. Pag mahal mo ang isang tao, kusa kang sumusuko, hindi mo kailangan pilitin. Kusa kang nagpapasakop. Buong puso, may kasama pang joy. So how can we continue to be relevant by being shepherds? Shepherds of love. By being caring. Because love never becomes irrelevant. The more modern, therefore creative, people become, less love goes around because people are busy and are mechanized. That's why love becomes more relevant. In this technological age, there's only one real power, and that will be the power of love. Kasi nawawala na ng power yung estado, nawawala na ng power yung ganito yung ganyan, you know? Naiiba, nagsishift ang mga configurations of power, but love will always be power. Power not to dominate, but power to continue to make connections. There is a lot of need for love. At ang sabi ni uh, Peter dito, Be shepherds and do not lord it over the younger ones. Do not assert an authority that was tribal in nature because we are no longer in a tribal setting. Do not assert authority in a conservative way because we are not in a conservative system. And those who read the signs of the times and ride to the changing times are the ones who will be happy. At ang sabi ni Peter dito, you know, during the time of Peter, Usong-uso na rin yung print. Sinusulat na nga nila yung letter eh. Pero ang Israel nun, hanggang nung panahon na yon, ang laki-laki ng hangover at ang laki-laki ng remnant ng orality. Kaya mapapansin niyo pati ang mga Bible writers, ang kukulit eh. Sinabi na kanina, sasabihin na naman ngayon, sasabihin na naman mamaya, sasabihin na naman mamaya, paulit-ulit. Although isinusulat. Because you must never forget that the Bible was first orally communicated before it got printed. Pati ang Bible, oral tradition yan. Alam natin that the first five books of the Bible, pinaniniwalaan ng maraming scholar, were written by Moses. Paano nalaman ni Moses ang nangyari kay Adan at kay Eva? Paano nalaman ni Moses ang nangyari kay Abraham, kay Noah, 
Paano nyo nalaman lahat yon kung hindi dahil sa kwento ng matatanda? Kwento na napakalaki ng uh, posibilidad ay kinakanta. Tulad ng ating mga pasyon na nagmula sa ating mga epic. Actually, yung pagkanta ng pasyon was the old Filipino way of telling a story. Ginamit lamang yan para yung text isinaka yung text ng pasyon. But the old way of singing, kaya may tono, kaya may rhyme para matandaan nang nagkukwento ang kwento niya. Hindi ba pagka may rhyme, madali mong matandaan yung susunod, madali mong matatandaan kasi may rhyme eh. Kaya nga may mga measure para alam mong, ah, meron pa akong sasabihin dapat. Because how will you remember, for instance, we went to the Tiboli and recorded 33 hours of chanting. 33 hours. How will you remember every line kung walang conventions of rhyme, conventions of ganito and ganyan? Kaya mahalaga yun. So the Bible itself was oral. At kahit nagsusulat na, yung mga Bible writers nung panahon na yan, ang kanila pa background, framework ng thinking, oral. Kaya kung may, napansin nyo ba ang kulit sa Bible? Yung paulit-ulit, nasabi na, sasabihin na naman, uulitin na naman, because that is orality. Kaya maging dito sa sinasabi ni, ni Peter, bakit kaya niya sinulat yung first Peter? Hindi ba dahil mayroong gap yung matatanda at mga bata? Nothing is really different. Yung nangyayari nun, nangyayari rin ngayon. Magkakaiba lang yung detalye. Pero pwede tayong matuto sa mga sinabi nila nun tungkol sa problema na yon, pwedeng i-apply yan ngayon. Because the Bible is universal. The truth of the Bible transcends all cultures. It is supra-cultural. Kaya mahalaga. So ang sabi ni Peter, Be shepherds and you will always be relevant. Be examples. You know, young people will always know the theory. But somebody who lives the theory, somebody whose life is an example of that theory will always be an authority. So sabihin, you want to keep your authoritative place, your place of respectability, the place and situation where people have a lot of respect for you, be an example of all these great truths. And you will never lose relevance and importance. Sabi niya, do not lord it over the young ones. Huwag mong daanin niya sa dahas o ipilit ang imposisyon o ipilit ang iyong edad. Earn! The respect. And you can be creative. We can start because now, there's the printed word. Ano po ang admonition sa young people? Sa verses 5 to 8. Young men, in the same way, be submissive to those who are older. All of you, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. Because God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that He may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxieties on Him, because He cares for you. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour. Young people, young adults, ang sinasabi ng Scripture, be submissive. Be humble. Why? Bakit humility ang pinag-usapan? Kasi ang mga young people have a tendency na maging mayabang. Mayayabang, palibhasa nga, because they think now they know more than their parents. Lalong-lalo sa Pilipinas, na mayroong generation na hindi nag-aaral at may generation na nag-aaral, yung generation na nag-aaral, masyadong lumubog sa, sa lit- literate orientation. Tapos ibebelittle nila, mamaliitin yung mga magulang na nasa non-literate orientation. So yung mga pinag-aaral, kumisa ng mga magulang, nagiging mga halimaw at monster. Dahil matapos matuto ng konte yung mayabang at gano'n na lang sagot-sagot ng magulang, gano'n na lamang na lait-laitin ang conservative and non-literate orientation ng magulang, not knowing that that too is right. Not one is better than the other, except that technology is changing the mode of knowing and keeping information and disseminating it. But no system is better than another. In fact, with the advent of technology, sa dami nga ngayon ang napiprint na libro, sa dami ng nababasang libro, sa information highway na ang bilis-bilis makuha o mailagay ang information, this generation has not even produced a philosopher. Wala. Mula yata noong 19th century, walang philosopher na lumabas. Mula nung umuso ang printing. So, knowing more does not mean being wiser. The young people today are probably just better informed 
but not necessarily wiser. Mas marami lang alam na facts. But what you do with the facts is what's important in life. Kaya ang paalala ni Pedro, maging nung sa generation niya, nun pa man, palalo na ang mga young people. Kaya ang sabi niya, be humble and be submissive. Hindi ko mo kayo nasa literate culture na mas marami kayong access to information. Ngayon at noon, pareho rin yun. Magkaiba lang nga yung mode. Huwag kayong maging mga mayabang. Consider that orality is still very much alive in our society. In the Philippines, orality is still very much alive. Lalo pa nga yung napakarami nating educational institutions that are only diploma mills. Only a fool can afford to be proud because a wise person will have a healthy, factual assessment of himself. And if you have a healthy, factual assessment of yourself, ang sasabihin mo, woe is me. I am nothing. Only those who don't know anything think that they know a lot. Because the more you know, the more you realize that yesterday you did not know it. And the more it humbles you when you get to know more. When you are able to say, oh, I was a fool, congratulations, you are probably now wise. Because the first realization of a wise person is that he was a fool. But a fool is so foolish that he doesn't know that he is a fool so he can be proud. Ang pwede lang maging proud yung hindi niya alam ang totoo tungkol sa kanya. Sapagat ang totoo sa bawat isa sa atin, pag nalaman natin face to face, nakakapagpahambol. Pag nalaman natin face to face ang ating mga kakulangan, ang ating mga kasalatan, ang ating mga kamalian, ang ating mga kapintasan, magiging tayong humble. That's why it takes a fool or somebody with a brain damage to be proud. Lalong-lalo sa mga young people. Alam niyo, young people, akala nila, ang dami nilang alam. Kasi nga, hindi pa nila alam eh. Pag nalaman na nila, tsaka lang nila malalamang, hindi pala nila alam dati. Katulad halimbawa, let me substantiate. Akala ng mga bata, napakadaling maging ina. Nanay ko naman, ganyan, nanay ko naman, ganyan. Nakuha, hindi ko gagawin yan. Kung ako ang nanay, bla 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 bla. Pag naging nanay na, tsaka niya malalamang, ay, ganun pala. May point pala ang nanay ko. Kaya lang, habang hindi mo yun nararanasan, hindi mo alam yun, so you think you know better. Kung meron ditong proud, you probably have no honest assessment of yourself. That's why you are proud. Because anybody who will really analyze himself or herself, lulubog sa lupa sa kahihiyan, sa Diyos at sa tao at sa sarili, dahil sa ating mga kamalian at kakulangan. Pati ang mga nagmumukhang mabubuti nating gawain, marami pa rin doon ang motivation, selfish pa rin. Pati nagpadala ka ng card, nagregalo ka para ang bait-bait mo, meron ka pa rin palang selfish motive. Yung kumisan, oh mahal kita, etong ibibigay ko sa'yo, etong ibibigay ko sa'yo, yung pala binabakuran mo lang siya para wala ibang makapagbigay. Yun nga, mukhang mabubuting gawa, marami pang masamang pinagmumulan. Di lalo na yung mga masasamang gawa, saan pa yung nagmula? That's why it takes a fool to be proud. Kaya ang sasya sabi dito, be humble. When you think you know, you probably don't. Because those who know, know what they know and they know what they don't know. And because of that, they become humble because they are not sure if what they know is what is supposed to be known. Kaya sabi, be humble. At ang kasunod pa, iba talaga itong uh, mga sense of humor nitong si Pedro, cast all your anxieties on him for he cares for you. Meaning God. Ibig sabihin, young person, may anxiety ka dahil sa conflict mo with the old people, cast your anxieties on God. Sa kanya mo ipagtiwala, sa kanya mo ilapit, at harapin mo yung anxiety God's way. E saan saan inihaharap ng mga young people ang anxiety nila when they have problem with their elders or their parents, idinadaan sa drugs, idinadaan sa alcohol, idinadaan sa walang katapusang sports. Na hindi naman masama yung sports, kaya lang kung ilang gagawin nyo, hindi pa rin niya na-solve. Escapist lang yun. Dinadaan sa pagbabarkada, yung mga iba dinadaan sa pagre-rebelde, sa pagpiprimarital sex, sa pag-asawa ng maaga, dinadaan sa paglalayas. Ang sabi ni Pedro, kung may problema kayo sa inyong mga elders, cast it. Cast all your anxieties on God because He cares for you. Sa Diyos nyo sabihin through prayer, 
sa Diyos kayo humingi ng solusyon through meditation and by obeying God's law and by claiming God's promises, you can also have comfort. Sabi ko, may problema kayo sa communication, meron kayong gap, matanda o bata, cast your anxieties on God. Hindi yung cast your anxieties on the pusa, sipain the pusa. Hindi ba? Sipain ang lata, ibagsak ang pinto. Hindi yun ang sabi. Sabi, cast your anxieties on God. Peter recognized that there would be anxieties. And he gave a solution how it might be faced. Cast it on God. Mga young people, kung may problema kayo sa mga magulang nyo, sabi sa Bible, cast your anxieties on God because He cares for you. Huwag niyong dadaanin sa rebellion. Huwag niyong dadaanin sa papagaling-galingan. Huwag niyong dadaanin sa paglalayas. Daanin niyo sa pamamaraan ng Diyos. Which, of course, you have to know. You have to know God. You have to know the teachings of God. And when all else seems to fail at the moment, you've got to know the promises of God because they'll give you immense comfort because God keeps His word. And we know that we can rely on God. Dahil ang Pilipinas, nasa orality pa rin, napakahalaga pa rin, nang matatanda talaga. At dahil napakababa ng degree ng edukasyon, ng napakaraming institusyon, I tell you this, kahit tatlo ang inyong diploma, siguro, mas marami pa rin talaga ang alam ang magulang nyo. Hindi ko naman nilalait ang maraming eskwelahan, pero totoo naman, di ba? Mga andami-daming college graduates na wala naman talagang alam. O kung pumasama na ipasang awa, kaya borderline talaga, kaya hindi mo malaman. Hindi ba sa klase, lagi na lang merong magaling, may hindi? Merong nakakatch yung agad yung buong ideya, merong konti lang. Kaya I tell you this, this sa mga medical schools, meron din ganon. Paano ka ang doktor nyo, yung mga pasang awa? Naku, kawawa naman kayo. Kung ang mga abogado nyo, yung mga pasang awa, talo ang kaso nyo. Dahil talagang laging may magaling. Pero marami, hindi. Sadly, that's why we should all be humble. Times change. Parents, elders, read the signs of the times. You cannot forever insist on a tribal, non-literate, oral framework in communicating with and dealing with the younger ones. And younger ones, you've got to understand the orality, the non-literate background of your parents or grandparents. And when all else fails, ang sabi ng Biblia, be humble. Be humble and be submissive. More than what I can say, Peter must have a good reason for having said such. Obey it, because we know that all Scripture is inspired by God for instruction, for correction, for rebuking, for training, so that everyone may be equipped for every good work. Whether or not you agree with Scripture, you obey. Because you're agreeing or non-agreeing will not make it right or wrong. Scripture will always be right. So let's bridge that generation gap. Old ones, be more creative. Huwag nating ipilit yung mga dati. Wala na yun. Sumakay tayo sa mga pagbabago ng panahon. Nagbabago lang naman yung mga pamamaraan, pero yung kaluluwa ng lahat ng katotohanan, pareho pa rin. Nagbabago lang yung katawan, hindi yung kaluluwa. Nagbabago lang yung technology, pero hindi yung ideya. But old ones, if you will continue to be respected, to be needed, known for your authority in terms of love, and by giving a good example. And in that case, no matter what technology comes, you will always be relevant. Because no technology can replace love. Kaya mahalaga to be a loving parent. Young ones, do not be proud. Be submissive to your elders. And be very, very considerate. Not bragging about what you know. But being humble as the Lord tells us. Ang katatapos pong mensahe ni Pastor Ed Lapis ay pinamagatang... Bridge the Generation Gap. Ay 
Kung kayo po ay nabless ng programang ito o may comments o suggestions, mag-text sa Radio Listener Text Liwanag. Type RL space name space address space ang inyong mensahe at ipadala sa 0917-549-2624. Oras na po para pansamantalang magpaalam ang programang Day by Day. Tayo po'y magsama-sama mula lunes hanggang biyernes. Magandang gabi po at mabuhay ang Panginoong Hesus.